Hey guys, Miss Willis here. Today we're going to be looking at um, the animal kingdom, starting off with invertebrates, so things that do not have a backbone. Um, in the whole animal kingdom, things to remember about them is that they are all heterotrophs. They all have to consume something else in order to get their uh, food source. They're all multicellular and they're all eukaryotic. They have a true nucleus that's separate from all the rest of the organelles and parts of a cell within each of their cells. When looking at the animal kingdom, there are nine phyla. Remember that when we look at uh, the order of taxonomy, it goes kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Well, so if we look at the animal kingdom, and then we go into the subcategories within the kingdom, the next category will be phylum, and the plural for that is phyla. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, just to pronounce these, we're gonna look at them in detail on the next pages. Uh, starting off, we have periphera, then cnidaria, then platyhelminthes, nematoda, annelida, uh, arthropoda, mollusca, echinodermata, and chordata, which will be where we are with uh, things that have a backbone. So all of the first eight are going to be what we talk about today. Uh, for in invertebrates, 97% of the animal kingdom is made up of this. Um, that should make sense because insects fit into invertebrates and they are the most diverse type of um, animal that there is. So whether it's their appearance, their habitat, their uh, different features, or how they get their nutrients, there's just a huge amount of diversity amongst all of them. For the phylum periphera, these are all your sponges. So um, there's a scene in Finding Nemo when they're like bouncing on the sponges. Sponges are actually an animal. They're not just um, sitting there. When you see people say like, um, like with cleaning stuff, they have an aquatic sponge, that's a dead one of these guys. Now, obviously your uh, yellow and green ones with scrubbing pad that's not what we're talking about. That is fake stuff. That's artificial. But uh, when you see someone say that they have a natural sponge, it's a dead one of these guys. So they're all aquatic. They can live in uh, salt water or fresh water. They can reproduce sexually or asexually. They do not have a symmetrical shape. They can be lumpy in all different um, directions. They are sessile, which means that they don't move around. They attach to something and stay there. Um, yeah. Then for cnidaria, these are going to be like jellyfish, anemones, anemone, anemone, don't hurt yourself, right? Uh, anemones. And coral, when people talk about the coral reef, it's not just a rock that all these things are attached to. Coral itself is a living animal. And it just happens that a lot of different uh, organisms can attach to it as well. Um, they're all aquatic. They can be marine or freshwater. They have radial symmetry, meaning that in a circle, they are symmetrical. Um, they're heterotrophic, just like all of our animals in the animal kingdom. Um, they have cells that get organized into tissues. Uh, they do have a nervous system. And then there's two specific types of bodies. They can be uh, polyp-shaped or medusas. Um, this is what you think of with like your jellyfish, that dome shape at the top. Versus the polyp type look more like your plants, but they're actually animals. Uh, platyhelminthes are your flatworms. So tapeworms, which um, we've talked about briefly in the past, that these are the things that like latch on into a per if if a person consumes a tapeworm, uh, they latch onto the intestine and just kind of hang there and ah and it absorb all of the food as it's coming through you. Um, but uh, anyway, they fit into this group. Platyhelminthes, meaning um, flathead, so flatworm. Uh, they do have eye spots. They have an incomplete digestive tract, so they bring stuff in, but it comes back out the same tube when they're done digesting it. It's not like they just swallowed something and vomited it. Uh, whatever they vomit out is what 
would have been poop in something such as a human. Um, they can be aquatic or terrestrial, and they can move. They're not stuck in place. They're not sessil. They are mobile. Then we get to nematodes, which would be roundworms. So pinworms, hookworms, um, things like that. They have bilateral symmetry. They do have a complete digestive tract. And, um, and so just like in us, there's an in hole and an out hole. Uh, most of them are parasitic. They uh, absorb nutrients from their host and harm the host. They can be aquatic, aquatic or terrestrial. They move around. They don't have body segments like an earthworm has all those little ridges on it. That's what we mean with body segments. Um, or when we talk about uh, insects, we'll get to body segments again too. Um, but usually these are very small. Um, they can get to be really long, but uh, for the most part, these are usually pretty small. Uh, for annelids, these are going to be your segmented worms. So see how there are ridges on each of these guys. Um, and over here, you can see them. And on a worm, you can pick one up out in the dirt um, and see the segments on them as well. So earthworms, leeches, clam worms. Also have bilateral symmetry, like butterflies. They, If you fold them in half, they're the same on either side. Just like with us, our left side mirrors our right, right? Bilateral symmetry. Complete digestive tract, closed circulatory system. Um, they have body cavities and body segments. Some of them are parasitic. Not all of them are parasitic. Earthworms aren't parasitic. Uh, they actually are helpful in their environments versus a leech sucking your blood out. Is going to be parasitic. Uh, they can be aquatic or terrestrial. Uh, for your arthropods, these are going to be your insects, your spiders, crayfish, scorpions. They have bilateral symmetry. They have body segments. There's a head, a thorax, an abdomen. Uh, they have the exoskeleton and they can be aquatic or terrestrial. For the mollusks, uh, what is the joke in Finding Nemo with the sea cucumber and the mollusk? With friends, with fronds like these, who needs anemones? Anyway. Uh, yeah, I think I told that just as well as he did, didn't I? <laughs> um, but for our mollusks, clams and octopus, uh, snails, anything like that, they have bilateral symmetry. They have three main parts. They have a foot, a visceral mask, and then a mantle. Um, they have an open circulatory system. They have some sort of external shell. They'll have gills. And then um, kind of like a split tongue, the radula. Then for our echinodermata, these are going to be sea stars, so your uh, starfish, right? Sea urchins over here and sand dollars. They have bilateral symmetry and radial symmetry, at least in our adults, they will. Uh, they're all aquatic. They have an endoskeleton, so they don't have that hard outer shell like a, an insect does. Uh, and they're actually pretty closely related to humans when we look at our DNA compared to the other um, things in the animal kingdom, at least, um, that aren't um, chordates. And so then that's where we're going to leave off for there. Be sure to take the um, quick little quiz over these notes, and you can, you're welcome to refer back to them throughout. You can have it open at the same time. See you next time.